Well, it's the old man here. And Yakshamash, you know what that means. Yep. Walking and talking. Uh, 30 days in lockdown and another 30 to go. Oof, am I, uh, Well, this is the box. Uh, and my woodshed, what's left of it. I've been burning wood for 50 years. And this is the best wood I have ever burned. Rock hard, old growth, dug fir. Uh, there's a place in Bellingham that makes crossbars specifically for telephone poles. And this is the leftovers, and I'm hoping that they will, they're out of, they're closed now. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. And you know what the best part? It stacks so nice. <laughs> no air at all. So, story time, show and tell time. This is the, was my office. The state of Washington actually bought me this. When I started with Fish and Wildlife, um, didn't have an office. So they gave me this and it's been in the backyard. Um, I'm experimenting with earbuds to speak with. So we'll see how this works. This is part of my tuition when I made headstones. Uh, I told myself, well, there's going to be mistakes, and I couldn't go to school, so this was my tuition. I misspelled the name, and there she is. Makes a good step. And here's the, the back of the box. Yeah, derelict, but I still, good storage. Um, so much stuff. Uh, we'll take a tour. All these magazines. Part of the job was picking up garbage. I'm going to close this door. Maybe the wind's getting through. I was picking up garbage at public fixing, public fishing accesses. And so I was going to the dump once a week. And I go to the dump up in Deming, which is east of Bellingham. And this guy had inherited a shop, and he threw all of these magazines out, plus 500 more. I filled the whole back of the truck up. I filled the cab all the way to where I couldn't hardly see. Uh, stuff from way, way back. And I've read, I bet, 90% of them. And popular science. Uh... Mechanics Illustrated, uh, you name it. Talk about old school, huh? A simpler time. And that was 1933. Uh, God, where do I start? I thought I could. I thought I could. <laughs> yeah, years ago, I had a big oak desk right here that I moved into the house, and I actually had to cut the legs off to move it because once we brought the desk in, I built that wall, and of course it wouldn't fit through that door anymore. So, yeah, it's in the house. Motor magazines. This was in the stack, too, and this is from 1933 as well. And... A blacksmith and the mechanics next door are laughing. And I knew a guy, one of, <coughs> excuse me, my mentors was Greasy Sid Falk. And he was old enough to be a blacksmith turned mechanic. And I learned a whole lot of stuff from that old guy. This is 1942 during the war when the girls had to work. And from what I've seen, it, they were proud to do it. Nineteen thirty-seven. Uh, pack rat. Somebody made a comment. Said you need to collect more stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These are cool. Uh, to find one with the head is worth a lot of money. Almost all of them I found the head was chewed off, and I've probably chewed a few off myself. Um, 
beautiful junk. Yeah, kind of looks like my place. Not quite as ratty, but we do have plenty of stuff. Uh, Kids sizing things up with this tape. Um, I gotta watch myself, the shade right there. I really liked The Simpsons years ago. My grandson, we were talking about it, and he said, you wouldn't like it anymore, Grandpa. I go, what do you mean? He goes, it's pretty racy was the term. And he knows the old man ain't into that stuff. Got a mainline trailer. <laughs> we got problems. I hope I'm not, I'm kind of cold, but I'm, it's, I, hope, I don't think I'm shivering too bad. Now here we go. Lumberjack stuff. Cedar Home Shingle Company, East Stanwood. Uh, if it's old, I'll keep it. This fan belt came from Granny Petro's gas station. I bought all the parts that she had, and they aren't worth much. I suppose to someone they would be, but not, I mean, for resale, I don't think so. Um, more magazines. Yeah, for a while, I was busted up, and for one summer, I actually had to just sit for the whole summer, pretty much. And uh, I sat outside under the arbor, and I read magazines every day. And I read, like I say, I bet 90% of them. Um, yeah, settle down here, kid. Just a second here. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, you got the idea. I got a lot of stuff. I'm trying to get it. Homer Simpson sucker to stand up. Anyway, there he is. And I got vacuum tester. And toy cars. And yada, yada, yada. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. They all smell musty. Um, the box, it just has that smell. Um, you can freeze them. I put them in kitty litter, and that took a lot of the smell away, but it's a lot of work. You are here. <laughs> yep, here we are. We got radioactive material. We got target practice. Hit the core zone. Okay, now we're in stage two. This used to be, um, when the boys had come to visit, this was the bunkhouse. So uh, they lived in there, and I actually grew tomatoes out here for a while, but it got to the point where it was so expensive it wasn't worth the money. Um, got Alfred E. Newman. Got a steam tractor, steam wagon, that it actually works. Um, KRIB Radio was a station out of Seattle I listened to for years. Uh, college station, had a lot of cool stuff. Um, Tinker Toys and the Directions. Uh, what else we got here? Cobwebs, I don't know if you can see them. I actually came through and kind of cleaned it up. I hope this works. Like I say, I'm experimenting with my microphone. The long one uh, kind of doesn't work, so I got to watch that one. So I'm just, like I say, using earbuds. But I talked about slot cars and that up there. And here's some more of them. I, part of the deal was, and this is what he gave me. We got shit from, <laughs> from here and back. And underneath, I don't even remember what's down there. Let's see if I can do it without making a big-ass mess. 
Oh, just some track and controllers. And amongst all this stuff he gave me was, hold on, I gotta set you down. Part of what, there. So part of all the stuff he gave me was some slot cars in a box. There's a Banshee. Um, and I put them on eBay. I sold some of them for two, three hundred dollars. And but this one is called a Banshee. I sold the box on eBay for twelve hundred and fifty bucks. A guy from California that owned a uh, hobby shop wanted the box. He had me insure it for three thousand dollars. And I wrapped it in uh, foam rubber. I actually cut foam rubber blocks, put it inside the box, and made it uh, shit a foot thick all the way around. Because he specifically said, "Do whatever you can to make sure that's safe." So I did, and he paid me well. Plus twelve hundred bucks plus shipping. Um, so here we've got tires. Racing colors. Um, graphite, track cleaner. Yeah, when we were kids, um, this was the big deal. Uh, you could go to the slot car track and rent the track for a while and uh, race cars. And a friend of mine across the street, Charlie, he, we both had a set. So in the summer, we'd put them both together and make these really long tracks. And we'd actually went as far as uh, cutting foam tires to make it more harder, I guess, and put three-in-one oil on this one corner at the end of a long straightaway just to add to the fun. There's a slot car motor. You know, I've gone to a, uh, a slot car track maybe 10 years ago. They had one in town for a short time. And like everything else, it's evolved to perfection. And these slot cars were basically a blur on the track. You couldn't even see it. It was just... And it was like, this is beyond the old guy. In fact, I brought one of the old ones that I had. Uh, it was... Let me see. I'll find one that looked like it. It kind of looked like this. But it was a lot... It had a plastic body and a pot metal frame, of all things. I mean, it wasn't made for speed at all and these kids were actually giving me a bad time about it and I said hey I didn't come here to get um, ragged on I said you know hey this is the way it was back then if you're interested we'll talk to you about it yeah check it out this is called a a wheelie bar so you could actually pop a wheelie and still keep contact cool stuff we're on 13 minutes I don't care it's going to take me hours to do but I'll do it I'm actually going to do a double header today. Um, nuts and bolts. Yeah, who knows? I'll uh, someday have to clean this out. But for right now, I'm just staying alive. Uh, more cobwebs. Some, there's some of that Drano. I was actually looking for that. Um, more old magazines. Uh, books. Albums. Uh, cross-country ski shoes, more models, super car wash, Prestone antifreeze. It's actually got some in it. Does not boil away, prevents rust. Here's another one. And these two came from Granny's gas station, and she let me, I paid whatever was written on them, I think, 50 cents or something. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The kids made that. In fact, they got the whole thing in there. Okay, now we'll get towards the end here. Um, yeah, I actually grew tomatoes out here, but it wasn't cost effective at all. Uh, about a hundred bucks a month to run that big light. So I just 
buy local tomatoes, it works good. Um, got an old Falcon pickup truck. And some kind of old Ford. And all these knobs. When I worked at the big home, they had a scrap pile. And I would visit it every week. And here was this whole stack of knobs. So I saved them all. I thought it'd be cool to maybe make a lamp and start with the big ones and work my way up. But um, I'm not dead yet, so I guess I still could. Cool old oil can. Uh, are we wired yet? Yeah, hey, those were the days, you know. Young, you could handle, I could handle that shit. Copenhagen coffee, espresso. Uh, yeah, but you get older and all of a sudden you got to start taking care of stuff. Maximize what we have left. You got a pressure washer I use. Got a big hand truck I got from my dad. And it's got a third leg, you can flip it out. And I, we used to, oops, um, I don't know if you can see it. He uh, worked at Fort Lewis, and his job was fixing and filling vending machines for the uh, soldiers. And him and I packed ice cream machines up three flights of stairs. God, he just had to bust his ass to get him up there. And uh, only to have him unplug him or mess with him to where we'd have to take it out again. And it was like they didn't have an elevator or nothing else. It was like, poor old guy. He, it's like all of us, busted his ass. Um, here's a Honda Metropolitan. Yeah, a guy gave it to me. It's got a stripped spark plug hole. And um, we'll see what happens with that. So, one last look at the box. Yeah, this was the hangout. And uh, I used to keep a heater in there and kept the office warm for years and years and years. And now, uh, as you can see, derelict. I had to look that word up. I thought that derelict meant stupid or something. And uh, derelict means abandoned. I saw a picture of these guys and it said, uh, a group of derelict men. And I looked at them and they weren't suit and tie, but they weren't bums, that's for sure. And uh, Nice view. Eastern Oregon. Um, yeah, I looked down and I thought, well, these guys don't look like bums. So I looked up the word, and it was a picture during the Depression. And it said, a group of derelict men. And that's what they were, is abandoned. So if you guys hang in there, 18 minutes. Boy, I don't think anybody will be bored. It's not like we all got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> What do you think? On top of making headstones, one of my daughters made coffins. We made like five of them. Um, and they were about an inch too wide. We didn't know. Uh, and plus, none of us are really very good salespersons. Uh, so they were out in the barn. This one's going to go to my other daughter's house for a flower bed. So... Happy trails. The old man will be back in Yak Shamash. I'm good. I'm not sick. Take care. Thanks for coming by.